Music was something that he always loved, and the decision to pursue a professional career in it was a no-brainer. He also just happened to be incredibly talented at it too, especially songwriting. However, the direction that the R&B genre specifically ended up going in caused him to rethink everything and decide to hang it up indefinitely. Let's find out what happened to R&B singer Joe. Joe Lewis Thomas, professionally known as Simply Joe, was born in Columbus, Georgia. When he was a toddler, his family, consisting of his evangelical minister parents and four other siblings, packed up and moved to Opelika, Alabama. The environment he grew up in was filled with gospel music. He was also an active member of the church, singing in the choir and playing guitar. After graduating high school in 1990, he relocated to New Jersey and continued to sing and write music while working various odd jobs. Eventually, he crossed paths with producer Vincent Herbert. He would go on to help Joe record a demo tape that got the attention of Polygram Mercury Records, the label who would sign Joe to his first deal. The recording deal was a bit of a surprise to Joe since he recorded the demo as a way to showcase his writing ability, not singing ability. I just wanted to do music. I just wanted to be around music. I was more known as a writer than a singer. My own manager at the time didn't know I sang. So it was on the low, not purposely, but I wasn't trying to be extra. Hey, I can sing too, check me out. I wasn't pushy or nothing like that. It was just that I was singing on the demos I was working on, so people got to hear me sing, without me purposely trying to sing. His debut album titled Everything was released in 1993. It spawned three singles, including I'm In Love, which became a top 10 hit on the R&B chart. After releasing only one project with them, Joe left Polygram and signed with Jive Records. The move would prove to be instrumental in taking his career to new heights. His next album, titled All That I Am, released in 1997, would really get people talking. The year before, Joe would lend the song All the Things Your Man Won't Do to the soundtrack for the crime comedy parody film Don't Be a Menace to South Central While Drinking Your Juice in the Hood. It ended up climbing all the way to number 11 on the Billboard Hot 100. As a result, it was later featured on his sophomore album, serving as the lead track. Baby, I wanna do all the things you man won't do. The album eventually went platinum, also powered by another hit single, the follow-up, Don't Wanna Be A Player. This track also got a major boost by being featured on the soundtrack from the comedy film, Booty Call, as well as being interpolated on the track for rapper Big Pun's song, Still Not A Player. Joe was an extremely busy man throughout the 90s. Not only was he doing his own projects, but he was also a highly sought after songwriter and producer for many other artists. After all, that's where he started. He wrote for the likes of Escape, Tina Turner, Babyface, and SWV. He can even be heard doing background work as on R&B singer Brandy's track, Angel in Disguise. Joe would also get the chance to not only work with pop diva Mariah Carey, but get another chart-topping hit out of it. She asked him to sing on the song, Thank God I Found You, the second single off of her album, Rainbow. It reached number one on the Hot 100 and was later certified gold. In April 2000, Joe released his third album, My Name Is Joe. The project produced three singles, two of which, I Wanna Know and Stutter, cracked the top five at the number four and number one positions respectively. Not surprisingly, the album would become a major hit worldwide, going platinum in Canada and Britain, as well as triple platinum in the US. So far, it is the best-selling album of his career. The following year, the single I Wanna Know, as well as the album, received Grammy Award nominations in the Best Male R&B Vocal Performance and Best R&B Album categories. Joe's fourth album, Better Days, was released the following year. It was significantly less successful than My Name Is Joe, however, it did reach gold status and received two more Grammy nominations. Joe kept the momentum going with his fifth effort, titled And Then. Two years later, he sought the assistance of some heavy hitters in the game to work with him, including production duos 
Carvin and Ivan, Dre and Vidal, The Underdogs, and fellow R&B singer-songwriter and label mate R. Kelly. The lead single called More and More was actually written by the self-proclaimed king of R&B himself and became a top 20 hit. Then, for whatever reason, things went downhill between Joe and Robert. Joe would later claim in a 2014 interview with Vlad TV that he received information from trusted sources that R. Kelly got in touch with numerous radio stations and told them to stop playing Joe's music or he wouldn't participate in any of their events. Joe said he never confirmed how true the rumor was, but he couldn't imagine that anything like that could really happen because of the relationships he built with people and that one man could never have that kind of power over him. He chalked up the behavior to jealousy. He also said that he's never had any altercations with R. Kelly and continues to have respect for his talent. Now seemed as good a time as any to take a break from music, which Joe did. However, he did involve himself in other business ventures, such as real estate, an upscale clothing line, and his own brand of tequila. Joe's sixth album, titled Ain't Nothing Like Me, released in April 2007, would mark his final project with Jive Records. After his departure, Joe continued to release most of his projects independently. Four out of the next five albums that Joe released would make it into the top 10 on the Billboard 200 Albums chart. He would fall out of that category but remain in the top 20 with his last two projects, Bridges in 2014 and My Name is Joe Thomas in 2016. On the R&B charts, however, his albums have consistently remained in the top five. In a November 2016 interview with YouKnowIGotSoul.com, Joe was asked if his My Name is Joe Thomas album would be his last, since there is a reference about that on one of the tracks. He replied, I love the music 100%, but also I want everybody else to love the music as well. I guess it comes down to if you're not as successful as sales and you look at the numbers, which can really be a huge, huge impact on whether you want to continue or not. In August 2019, Joe's fans raised their voices in displeasure when after tuning in to the first episode of the sixth and final season of popular TV show Power, in which Joe sings the theme song, they found out it was replaced with one sung by R&B singer Trey Songs. There was an overwhelming number of comments saying that Joe's voice matters and that they love the original version better. The show creator and rapper 50 Cent posted a video on Instagram to explain that Trey did it as a favor to him. He was also visibly annoyed and confused by the backlash since he claimed people hadn't bought a Joe CD in years. However, he did say that he would put the original version back if fans continued to complain. On February 13th, 2020, actor and singer Tyrese made a surprise announcement on his Instagram that he and Joe would be creating a joint EP together. Joe, however, didn't make any mention of it on his own platform, and as of the making of this video, there hasn't been any further news about it. What more do you want from me? <laughs> At the end of 2020, fans got a special treat to finally hear Joe on an unreleased gospel track. The song called You The Man was supposed to be included on a gospel album Diddy and his Bad Boy Records label was slated to release in 2001, but that never happened. Throughout 2019, Joe continued performing stateside as well as internationally. The last post on his Instagram is from December of that year, so it appears that he's been laying low since the worldwide pandemic began. Hopefully, as things begin to return to normal, fans will be able to experience Joe and his timeless R&B classics live and in living color once again. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.